Have you ever wanted to introduce a transformational technology into your teaching, your school, or your workplace, and you find that you've been met with a small but very vocal subset of users that don't like that technology for one reason or another, and they'll tell you all about it? Well, this has to do with technology acceptance, the ability to actually look at new technologies objectively and see where they can augment what we're already doing and they can transform things so that we're doing things differently. And this is very important to distinguish between the two. Here on this channel, I have a lot of videos that talk about augmentation. We talk about adding functionality. We talk about doing things with technology to learn and teach better. But they may be things that we're already doing. We're just going to do them better with technology. But I also have videos on this channel where I talk about transformational technologies. For example, this video. This video is probably, well, it's not probably, it is the most viewed video on this channel. It has almost 670,000 views at the time of this recording. It has 13,000 plus likes, but it also has almost a thousand dislikes. And more than that, a lot of the people that don't like this video for one reason or another are very vocal in the comments section. It's probably the only video where I've gotten tons of really negative comments. Now I delete the most egregious of those comments. So if somebody's going to sit there and, and make some sort of insult that I'm trying to steal their data or those types of things, I'm just gonna get rid of the comment. They don't need to be part of the conversation. But there are people that simply say, I'm never going to use the cloud. It's a waste of time. Now, what's even more interesting is how much of the video they've actually watched. They will not accept the new technology immediately just by looking at the fact that it's a cloud-based service and they've already created their own preconceived notion about that transformative technology. This is very interesting and something that we're going to take a look at. We'll start by looking at the statistics on the video here on the channel and we'll see how quick people are to make that judgment. And then we'll ask ourselves a deeper question. Using the SAMR model, S-A-M-R model, we'll ask ourselves what do we need to do to understand technology in terms of how it either enhances or transforms the way we do things and how can we adapt that model so that we better understand when we introduce new technologies that we're going to get some some pushback on especially transformative technologies. Let's go take a look at the statistics for the video and then let's take a look at the SAMR model and how it relates to technology acceptance. If we take a look at the video, you can see that this is by far the most popular video on my channel with almost 670,000 views at the time that I'm making this video. You can see that I've got 55,000 hours of watch time on the video. And this really happened a couple hundred days into the video's life. It kind of got this boost here by the algorithm. Then it's been this steady video that always seems to get views. And recently in the last month or so, it's gotten a little bit of an uptick as well. But more important than the retain than the number of views and the number of hours watched are is some of the information that we have in relation to how people are watching this video. Specifically, if we scroll down here, you can see that when people are watching the video, the vast majority of people are reading the title, watching the first few seconds of the video, and then there's this steep drop off. It's pretty steady from this point. You can see that I have a pretty even uh, viewership. So people that are committed by this point in the video generally will watch close to the end. I get a little bit of a bump here because the video can be divided into two sections. The first section I explain what virtual machines are and in the second section I actually talk about using Azure as a lab system that you can use for students. But it does tell me a few things. One, that I need to improve my video editing and script writing. But you know, you live and you learn as time goes on. But it also tells me that a lot of people are reading the title of the video, watching the first few seconds of the video, and then forming an opinion which they express in the comments, you know, whether through a like or a dislike, or oftentimes people jump to the comments here. And normally the comments that I get that dislike the video, they, they will have some sort of comment that relates to something that's explained later in the video. So for example, they might make a comment, well, I would not put all of my data on the cloud. The video clearly states you're not putting your data on the cloud, you're using it for labs. Or they'll say something like, it'll cost too much. 
the video explains that you're only using it on a temporary basis for doing labs. But that does go back to something very interesting, which is how do people accept technology and how do people actually evaluate technology? And the answer for this video, at least, is they evaluate it by first impressions or they evaluate it by the title in the case of a video or the name of the technology. They're making a quick evaluation rather than going through the process of understanding something prior to making the evaluation of what they're analyzing. Now, I'm also going to be fair. I have had some really insightful and thoughtful comments for people that have watched the video and may disagree with the idea of using Azure for labs, but those comments are clearly distinguishable from the comments that dismiss it by only watching the first few seconds and making an opinion there. So if we look at the SAMR model, which was developed by Dr. Ruben Puente... Puentadura. I, I can't pronounce the name and I apologize for that. But this model was developed and it has two aspects to it. There is the enhancement aspect of using new technologies and there is the transformational aspect of using new technologies. And I think if we combine this with sort of perceptions around new technologies as well as technology acceptance models, we can see that enhancing a technology and gaining acceptance is probably much easier than introducing transformational technologies into an environment. And we get this with our students all the time. And as you can see from the video that I produced, I get this a lot with the introduction of something like a cloud technology as a potential replacement for lab work systems. Now, when it comes to substitution, there's really no add of functionality. And so I think this becomes a matter of preference. An example of this might be, let's say I have some word processing software, and let's say I have two competing packages of word processing, and I wish to go from one to two. So I want to introduce a new word processing package into my environment or my classroom. If it doesn't add functionality, all I'm really doing is trying to switch people's use of one tool to another. And because they can do the same thing that they did on tool number one that they can on tool number two, I think the, the change in preference is something that's easier to manage and the acceptance of the new functionality or the new technology will not be impeded by functional changes to it. If I'm adding functionality, so I have you know product number one and because product number two can do more than product number one, then at that point, I'm really kind of marketing the functionality. I'm saying, look, you were able to do these five tasks on product number one, and now you can continue to do those five tasks, but you can add tasks six and seven if we switch to product number two. There will be a learning curve no matter what product we're sw switching from and what product we're going to. But if I'm not adding any functionality, there might be a little bit of resilience for people to say, you know what, I've been using this one product for a long time. Why would I switch to another product if I'm not gaining any functionality? So that might be a little bit of a harder sell. And if you say, okay, I'm switching from product one to product two, but I am gaining, gaining some functionality, then you have to market and you have to let people know that that functionality exists and that they have these options available to them. But they're not changing anything. They're still doing the same things they did. Maybe they're doing them a little bit enhanced. In fact, I would argue that augmentation of a technology is really the sweet spot for technology acceptance. Here, they're saying, why bother switching if there's no functionality? Here, they're saying, okay, I will switch because I'm attracted to the additional functionality. The real challenge that I've seen with any type of technology adoption is around modification and redefinition. Underneath modification and redefinition, what's happening is that people are doing new things. We're redesigning the tasks that they've done. So they not only have to learn a new technology, but they may actually have a different task system that they're going to use. Now, that the redefinition of those tasks or the redesign of those tasks might be incredibly valuable. So it might be something that, you know, we're going to be able to do things we never could before. We're transforming what we've done in the past. So there will be some work to be done in terms of moving people and getting them to accept that new technology. 
And redefinition is extremely challenging because now what we're doing is we're, we're not just uh, modifying and redesigning the tasks that we're familiar with. We're doing things that we've never done before. So as an example with the video that I produced on cloud technologies for, for computer labs, so instead of having students go into a room with a bunch of computers set up for them to do labs, I'm saying instead use an Azure Cloud VM and use that to do your labs, and that's something that you could use. There, there's a lot of resistance. Now, of course, you know, it depends on whether somebody's watched the entire video or not, but their, re their reluctance to even watch that video as demonstrated by some of the statistics I gave you around view duration and such, and the, the, the rapidness at which they dismiss that transformational technology before even sort of examining that transformational technology, I think is a good indication of people's resistance to come in and look at any type of redefinition or any even any type of redesign of the way that they've done things in the past. And to be respectful, a lot of people have invested a lot of time and energy in learning how to work with a certain technology, and they will look for new features over time, They but they want to maintain the way that they're doing things. And they're only looking for ways to enhance what they're doing. They're not looking for ways to transform or completely change the way that they're doing things. So they will put up all sorts of barriers. Now, some barriers are legitimate. Some barriers to transformation, we have to ask ourselves, do we need to redesign the tasks or are we perfectly good with what we're doing? Do we want to do new things that we've never done before or is there no value in doing these things? So I'm not saying that we just enter this world of transformational technology without any thought or forbearance, but the, the fact that somebody will immediately, uh, at least from the statistics I'm getting on that video, they will immediately say, no, we're, oh, my, my pen's getting weird here. Um, they will immediately say, I'm not going to even enter into considering the transformation of how I'm doing things is a good example of where technology transformation is maybe challenging for a lot of people. As you can see, transformational technologies will get more pushback than technologies that simply augment what we're already doing. Here on the channel, I have a mix of both. I have a lot of things that I introduce that allow us to use technology to learn and teach better that really allow us to do things that we would do anyways. We just do them better through technology. Or I might introduce a technology that adds new functionality to something we already do. The real challenge are with transformational technologies. Those are technologies that are going to absolutely change what we're doing at the core, and those ones will have more of the pushback, more or less of the technology acceptance. People will say, that's something I don't want to do because that's a major change from what I'm doing now. It's easy to go through and introduce a product and say it's version number 12 and here are eight new features of it and people are all excited about that or looking at an existing product that has a lifespan and, and say there's some new features, there's some new ways to use it. What's really challenging though is having people look at transformational technologies and saying the way we're doing it could be absolutely eradicated and we'll have a brand new way of doing it in the future. Now, if this video was interesting to you, hit the like button because that does help the algorithm discover this channel to other people and it really helps grow the channel. And if you're interested in another interesting take of a transformational technology, check out this video here where I talk about Meta and whether or not the Metaverse and some of the things that the company Meta is doing might be transformational and might actually be kind of genius.